Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to modify my JSON program here so that it actually sends JSON data to my server, which is my Java servlet, but it could be a PHP script or basically anything. So I've got this method here that actually formats my JSON at the moment and I'm going to rearrange this a bit because I'm going to create a method here called private string um, format data or something like that format data as JSON let's call it and this method is going to do all this it's going to actually get the data that we want to format so I'll put that in there and I'll return let's return my JSON here. So where I say root.toString, I'll just return that from the method. Return root.toString. And I'll I won't pass to string an integer because I don't want to format this for actually maybe I will. Let's make it human readable. But normally you don't want your JSON to be human readable when you send it to a server. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo actually it will be quite nice. And I'll just return null if something goes wrong. And let's also just have a log.d here. And I'll say here, can't format JSON. So I'm just rearranging the code from um, a previous tutorial here. And all we're doing is just formatting some data as JSON and then hopefully returning it from this, this method. Now in this send data to server method, this method runs when you click the button in this application here. So here I'm going to first get the JSON data that I want to send. So let's say here string JSON equals. And now we can contact the server and send this data. So I've, I've actually already added internet permissions to this application, my JSON uploader here. If I go to the Android manifest, I've added this Android permission.internet and I've also made sure that my phone is connected to the internet because otherwise it's, it's not going to work. Let's just save this. And um, now again, I need to do, I need to contact my server in an async task because if I don't, I'll get a exception being thrown. And uh, if, if it were to be allowed, it would lock up my user interface, but um, Android won't even let you contact a server on the main thread. So let's say here, new async task. And for the parameters, I'll supply void for the first two and string for the last one, because I want to get a string, which is going to be the response from the server. I'll open a curly parenthesis here, and at the end I'll say execute to actually run the async task. And I'll click the error here and go to add unimplemented methods. And now I can put some code in here that contacts my server. So let's say here, let's, instead of saying return null, let's say return send data. Actually, no, I've already got a send data to server, so I can't use that. Let's say return server get server response. How's that? And I'll create I'll create that method. I'll just click this um, error here and go to create method get server response. And I actually want it to be a method in my top level method in my activity. So I'll add this here. And then if I, I'm just going to click in my async task and right click and go to source, override implement methods on post execute. So this is going to get the actual text that I, retur I return in doing background. And in here, I'm going to say text view, text view equals text view find view by ID, r.id. And I gave that text view an idea of an output and then I can just say text view dot set text set text result and this result that's passed to one post execute 
as we've discussed before, is going to be what you return from doing background, which is going to be a string, because that's the third template parameter here. And I'm going to return uh, whatever get server response returns. And now in get server response, I can add the code that contacts my server and sends my JSON. And actually, I'm going to have to pass get server response my JSON. So let's pass that in here. Pass in the JSON and here I can make this take a string parameter. And now we've kind of dealt with the plumbing. Um, actually, I'm going to have to make this string JSON um, either final or just move it closer to um, to here. Let's let's maybe make it final like that, so that I can access it within this anonymous method. And now. Now finally I can write, I've, I've dealt with the plumbing and the rearranging and now I can actually write the server code that will contact the server. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'll return null for a moment just to shut it up and stop it complaining because it's good to work with a program that's actually compiling. And now to send data to the server I'm going to use a HTTP POST object. So I'll say HTTP POST POST equals new HTTP POST and I can pass uh, a URL to that and if I just go to my browser, this one I think, and let's just get the URL here of my servlet program that I wrote, just copy that, go back to Eclipse and I'll just paste this URL in, in there. So the HTTP post, HTTP post class kind of encapsulates the idea of making a post request. And I need to wrap my JSON string up in a string entity. So I'm going to say string entity, entity equals new string entity. And then I pass the string that I want to send to this to the constructor of string entity. And that throws a exception, so let's just surround with try catch. And um, it's it's always it's always quite tricky to remember everything when you're dealing with kind of code that involves more than one um, application. So I'm I'm going to actually handle these exceptions, and there are my initials, and I'm just going to say e.2 string in there. And uh, so I've got my entity and now I can say post.set entity and pass in that entity. And I also want to say post.set header and I want to set my and the header is information that you send to your server. Uh, so all kind of get and post requests have headers. And in the, in the header, I want to say content hyphen type, capital C on content there, and lowercase t on type. And all, all in lowercase, application forward slash JSON. And that tells the header, uh, that tells the server what kind of data I'm actually sending. And now I'm going to use a default HTTP client. And let's call this client equals new default HTTP client. And this is the thing that's actually going to send the, send the post request. So that like the uh, HTTP post here, that just encapsulates the idea of, of the actual request. But it's the HTTP client that's actually going to send it. And I'm going to use client.execute. And I'm going to pass in... I'm going to pass in um, my post execute um, here and I also need to have some kind of handler so let's let's use a basic basic response handler and this is what enables me to get my response from the server let's call that handler and I'll set it equal to a new basic response handler and I'll pass that as the second argument of my execute. And that also throws an exception. So let's just 
add um, catch clause to surrounding try here and I've got a bunch of possible errors here and I'm just gonna in each one of them I'm just gonna handle them by outputting debug stuff saying exception dot two strings so that hopefully we'll get a useful error message and this returns a response which in this case is going to be a string and that's going to be the data that my servlet sends back the stuff that I wrote in my servlet with out.println or if you had a PHP script of course you could uh, you'd send your data back by some other method but it's just stuff that the servlet or the, the server in general just prints out that's what we're going to get back here so let's say string response equals client.execute and now I'll just say return response and I'm returning this from my get server response and get server response is called in doing background in my async task and it returns a string which on post execute then receives and it sets the text of the text view in on post execute because you can only update your GUI in on post execute you can't update it in doing background in your async task I think that's I think that's all working um, if we don't get a response we're gonna return null and I could say something like unable to contact server maybe we'll make it a little bit more robust but I won't I won't dwell too much on error handling here because I just want to show you the nuts and bolts of getting this thing working so let's uh, run this on my phone um, and then I can try it out and hopefully we'll get the stuff back uh, that we've sent I did remember to send the JSON didn't I yeah I did well, we should get our, JS our JSON back and I also in the last tutorial program the server to send me back a little message as well so let's just try this and uh, I'll go to my screencast don't know why but my taskbar has vanished and here we go and I'll, I'll click send data and we'll wait and there we go so we've got hello from server and we've got the JSON that we sent and the reason I've got that is purely because I told my server to send it back and it's formatted because I formatted the JSON when I sent it with two string but uh, you wouldn't normally want to do that you'd normally want to just compress it as much as possible so here I'm using two string one but usually you just use two string and the reason it looks as it does is just because here um, I in my servlet I sent back hello from server and I echoed back the JSON and that's what we're seeing here so that's it for this tutorial have fun with that and of course you could pass the JSON in your server if you search for JSON Java JAR or something like that in Google you'll find a little library that you can include with your servlet to enable you to pass JSON you can pass JSON in any Java program just by the same kind of method that I've already shown you so that's it for this tutorial and until next time, happy coding.